Dennis Gates with us. Uh, Dennis, certainly familiar with this part of the world, having played collegiately at Cal, graduated in three years and played a fourth year as a master's candidate, coached at Cleveland State beginning in 2019, a 50 and 40 record there. In his first season at Mizzou and the Tigers were 29, 24 and nine overall and 11, seven in the very difficult SEC. Coach, welcome to uh, back to Northern California. Thanks for having me. Okay. Questions? Dennis, uh, Gabe DeArmond, Power Mizzou. And again, it, it kind of like I asked the guys, I, it may sound like a dumb question, but how big is the difference between playing in the NCAA tournament and being a winner in the NCAA tournament? Well, it's a prestigious tournament, and I truly believe the history uh, speaks for itself. Um, Sometimes we get locked into the seedings and different things like that, but all teams that's invited are really, really good teams. Great coaches, uh, there's a tradition in it, there's a uh, want to advance in it, and it's very important to each team. Uh, everyone's preparing, as we saw games last night, uh, and we'll see more games today. Uh, and, and they're possession by possession games, so we just hope uh, all of our conference games all of our preseason scheduling has prepared us for the moment. I know our players, our staffs, they're all going to work hard, work their very best to be prepared. And that's what we're going to continue to do, and that's what we've done in the past. Vahi. Hey, Dennis. Vahi Gregorian, Kansas City Star. Um, I wonder if you, you could just look back at your approach to Kobe and Caleb and the family when, uh, when you took the job. and. How, how you try to um, instill the idea of coming back by, by also having sort of a, a gentle touch, it sounds like. Kobe made a point that you didn't push, you just were there. Yeah, for, that's, a, that's a great question. And, and I think it's important to also add the entire roster. Transition isn't easy for anyone. Um, you have teammates, you have brothers on your, in your program, guys that are in the portal, guys that are not in the portal, guys that are on the, uh, on the lines of entering or not. Uh, but you have a group of guys that are welcoming you into their space. I was invited into their space, and that's what the conscious mind of myself has to remember. I ultimately wanted to get the feedback from those around, the support staff, and different people, but also the different teammates, the different managers, uh, the custodians, the, 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 the service, the people of service, right? I think they have a very good idea of these young people as they see them in passing every day, and we cannot overlook uh, it being just Kobe or Caleb. They have friends and teammates, and those friends and teammates um, were in the portal, and some didn't return. Ronnie DeGray did return. Uh, those are important fixtures in our program, uh, but those conversations were, were definitely met with, with uh, delicate gloves, and I just wanted to be in full transparency, let them know who I was, but also separate the two. Uh, we didn't use the word brother in our program, Caleb Brown, Kobe Brown, two different people. Um, but ultimately, I wanted to get in front of mom uh, and dad and they did a great job raising them, and I just wanted to be able to let them know my vision, but also my plan. Ron. Ron Kreitschick from the San Francisco Chronicle. Um, Dennis, obviously your priority is, is your team here, but as Doug mentioned, you have history in Northern California. Any personal significance being back here, and, and how, how did your time at Cal maybe shape who you are now? Um, as a kid growing up in Chicago, um, leaving, uh, on, a, on a journey to become a student athlete and living a dream. Uh, I first thank Ben Braun uh, for giving me a scholarship uh, to Cal Berkeley, a place that I love, a place that was great for me at the age of 18, a place that helped shape me, uh, a place that allowed me to see the world. I've used basketball as a compass in my life. Coaches and educators played an important role and it is the reason why I coach today uh, simply because I knew how important those people were and are in my life. There's not one coach I don't talk to. I talked to Ben Braun still to this day, spoke to him this morning, uh, actually invited him out to come to a game. I have several teammates, uh, roommates, college roommates who live here in Sacramento, 
but it's important uh, to understand uh, the development of me as a young man uh, coming from Chicago and what Kyle Berkeley was able to do for me, uh, but also the people I met along the way and how influential they were to my development. And I, I really thank them uh, for what they've been able to do because whenever you're sharing your time and your talents with other people, especially strangers, uh, and helping them develop in life, um, you, you, you are doing something of service, and I, I'm, I'm thankful of that. Uh, and, and the significant part is uh, being able to graduate in undergrad in three years, being able to start my master's degree, being able to be, um, you know, the, the, the student athlete of the year uh, in the Pac-12 or Pac-10 at that time was all essential things. And, and I've developed some unbelievable bonds, unbelievable friendships, but also some great memories uh, from, from my time at Cal Berkeley. Okay, uh, one more thing. If we have any Zoom people who want to ask a question, please raise your hand. Okay, we have one. W what is your question, sir? Can you hear me now? Okay. You got me? Okay. Got, we got you. Yep. Okay. Uh, Al Lewis, KB, and you in Logan, Utah, Coach. Uh, you have experience against Utah State as an assistant at Nevada. Can you reflect on that and then also give us a little bit of a read of what you see of Utah State's team? Yeah. Uh, great tradition. The great Stu Morrell uh, was the head coach at that time. Uh, we were able to play both um, in, in Utah but as well as at home. And great tradition, great program. Um, some great players and and what I do know is a great fan base uh, great culture um, and it speaks for where they are today uh, coach Odom has done a great job but also you have to look at what this program has done in the last five years and it's been postseason play uh, they've earned the right uh, to play at this level uh, but also their tradition speaks for where they are um, you know I'm thankful to be invited and I know Utah State is thankful to be invited as well. And there are two great programs. Um, Mizzou has great tradition. And ultimately, what I do remember is how good of a uh, basketball fan base um, they are. And it's been tremendous uh, through the years to see the program continue to grow, although the coaches have changed. Dennis, along the lines of tradition and, and fan bases, when you take a new job, some coaches will take the path of, hey, what happened before here is, is in the past and doesn't affect us. You've really leaned into that tradition in trying to reconnect to Missouri's past. I, was that a conscious decision, and do you think that, that that has played any part in the way this fan base has embraced you and this team? Well, when you say conscious, conscious is intentional. Uh, respect is instinctual, and I've respected Everything that I've done in my life, I've respected those that have come before me, uh, no matter what age I was in or where I'm at or whatever endeavor I'm pursuing. I think when you respect things properly, um, you instinctually uh, know that there are some shoulders you stand on. And uh, Norm Stewart is a shoulder that and a friendship that I have been um, enlightened by and, and definitely fortunate to have. He has a great personality. He's, he's a jokester at times. Um, he's witty, quick on his feet, sharp as a tack. And, you know, he give, gives you unbelievable advice. And the same with Quinn Snyder. Uh, Quinn has been a great, great resource for me. I've had several conversations with him, um, you know, even in that transition of him being out of coaching and then getting back in the NBA uh, with the Atlanta Hawks. He's set aside time to reach out, and I thank him for that. But ultimately, even Mike Anderson, even Frank Haith, even Kim Anderson, even Conzo Martin, those guys have been tremendous resources for me along the way, and I'm thankful that they've allowed a relationship to form. We're all in a profession that has transition written all over it. Um, and you don't have always a script. And I'm thankful that the script of me calling them and thanking them and partnering with them, so to speak, and saying, you know, simply, thanks for allowing me to walk on the same sidelines as you once did, 
to be a great coach, you got to be absent from your home. You got to sacrifice things. And those guys definitely have sacrificed a lot uh, for Mizzou and the tradition that they've built. So I'm thankful to have those relationships. Quick follow up. Everybody who's ever met Norm has a Norm story. Do you have a Norm story you can share with us? Uh, I don't have one. <laughs> I don't have one, but I'm thankful for our relationship that I have have with them. Um, you know, the former players also, uh, I would be remiss if I didn't acknowledge their uh, welcoming because they have definitely uh, been a part of, of the tradition and our fan base. They are the tradition that never leaves, right? They are the tradition that are ingrained in the seats every single day. They make the sacrifices. They continue to donate to our um, – our, our, our Tiger Scholarship Fund, uh, they continue to give their time, their talents, their treasures to make sure our institution runs a certain way. Uh, I, I, I put out a challenge at the very beginning of the year that I want to see the place sold out. Uh, I want to see it sold out well before a Kansas game. And they showed up uh, and supported these young people. And I think that momentum allowed us to consistently give a level of effort, but also a level of comfort in our home by representing what I thought was a great style that our fans were proud of. Uh, whether they were near, whether they were far, whether they were in different countries, uh, our logo has traveled and our fan base has done a great job of rallying around the success of our team, but also being there to support us. Any other questions? One more question. One more. Yeah. Why not? We can. Uh, it, it, when I asked Trey who, who Utah State reminded him of, he yeah. said the offensive system is a little bit like Alabama. Mm -hmm. um, can you explain that, that similarity? And is there anybody else you've played this year that, it, that they remind you of? Yeah, you can look at uh, across the, the grid. I think when you look at um, Penn, Look at the pin game. Those are teams that really spread you out, teams that have consistently lived uh, in different areas of transition, but also the three-point line. Their personnel is very, very unique. Um, you know, Coach Odom has done a great job even before he got to Utah State, and obviously his DNA of his dad speaks for itself. He grew up in the gym. Uh, and and his, his IQ is very high when it comes down to building a program and building a team. He's done a good job. He's done a good job at Utah State, and he was a perfect and is a perfect fit for Utah State and what, what, what's needed successfully. Um, as it relates to the statistics, I think they have some, some, some individual players that make the plays that need to be made. Um, and you can go across the board. They have five players in double digits. Uh, that's not an easy stat line to consistently have throughout the year, and they've been able uh, to demonstrate that. Uh, they've had different players earn, whether it's a, a six-man of the year or first-team all-conference. They're a team that has had um, camaraderie when it comes down to returning and retention from an NIT team last season. Uh, so you have those dynamics in place, uh, but also you, they come from a great conference. Uh, I've been on this West Coast in the Pac-10. I've been in, in, in the WAC. I've been at Nevada. I've seen different um, versions of the Mountain West uh, teams come and go, but also I've seen teams make the transition into the Mountain West, and they're one that have made a tremendous, tremendous stride uh, once they got the invite to be in that conference to consistently uh, be successful uh, in, in the sport of basketball specifically. Um, so ultimately, man, I'm, I'm thankful to be here. We have nothing but respect for our opponent, and we will, we will always do um, those things. May the best team win. They'll have a scouting report. We'll have a scouting report. And it'll be a great environment that both institutions are excited to represent their school, their conference, uh, and also build memories for young people. Coach, thank you. Thanks, M-I-Z.